Good day. The title of our lecture today is Wideband Angle Modulated Signals or Wideband FM and PM Signals. Now, the general form for a wideband signal, we have the following form for the FM case. It's A cosine omega CT plus KF times A of T, where A of T is the integration of the message. For the case of PM, phase modulated signals, the phase term now is controlled by the message. We have KP times M of T. Now, we have two scenarios for these signals. It could be wide band or narrow band. Based on this deviation, we have the following condition. If the deviation is much smaller than one, we call it narrow band. And the bandwidth will be almost double the message bandwidth, 2B. Similarly, the case for the phase modulated signal. If the deviation term here is small or relatively small, then the bandwidth will be 2B and we call it narrow band. So when do we call it wide band? If this condition does not hold, if this deviation cannot be ignored or not relatively small. So what is the bandwidth then? The bandwidth for narrow band is 2B. What's the bandwidth for the case of wide band? And this now let's say that the message we have is this blue signal and this message has a bandwidth of m of t and it's uh, bounded by minus p minus m of p to mp which means the peak values are given and our objective is if we modulate this signal what will be the bandwidth of the fm modulated signal m the blue signal will be fm modulated and i want to know what the bandwidth is unfortunately it's not easy to find out from the expression here if I give you the equation, you will not be able to tell directly. Instead, we're going to approximate the signal by the red signal here, which is m hat. It's basically a sampled signal, a kind of staircase approximation for the message. We would think that these two are somehow similar, and the FM modulated signal for the red case for m hat will have a similar bandwidth to some extent compared with the blue signal. So, this signal, which is sampled version, is sampled ac according to Nyquist rate, if you recall. If the bandwidth of the message is B sub M or BM, then the minimum required sampling frequency will be twice the highest frequency, which is 2 times BM. So, we can say that the time interval, the spacing in time, is equal to 1 over sampling frequency, which is 1 over 2 BM. Now, if the original signal is bounded, we expect also, of course, the sampled signal to be bounded by the same quantities. And then our generated FM signal will have the following form. We will be focusing on this approximate. If we find it, then we can go back to our original signal. Now, think of, of the red signal, and you can see that the frequency will be constant within every chunk here or or piece of the data. So if you go down, because the signal amplitude is constant, the frequency here is constant. So the frequency within every time interval is constant. And this is how the FM signal will look like. The frequency at any given point will be the center frequency, deviated by an amount proportional to the message. The highest value will be MP, and the minimum value would be minus MP. Okay, now let's take one of these pieces, one of these chunks, which is shown here, and we try to find the frequency of the signal. First, let's try to write this in time. This is nothing but a carrier, sinusoidal signal, but multiplied by a rect, because it has a starting point and an ending point. How much is this rect? It has a certain width and certain delay. So we can write the time domain expression as amplitude A, okay, and the delay is T naught, and because the width is 1 over 2 to P, we will be dividing by that, 1 over 2B, and then we have, we have it multiplied by 2BM. This is multiplied by a carrier inside of frequency omega, the instantaneous frequency. Using full transform tables, we can easily find the frequency of this. 
So pick this one. Erect will give you a sync and frequency domain with, of course, the proper scaling. And then we can say that if you multiply by a cosine, you will get two sinks and they are going to be scaled. So here is how things would look like. The function in time and the function in frequency. So rect will give you a sink and multiplying by cosine is like having two shifts with the proper scaling factor. To go from here to here, we need to use the full transform tables. Now, this means that the spectrum, if you try to plot this, this is nothing but we have two sinks. The center is the instantaneous frequency and we are shifting to the right and to the left. So that, that was the, the case for one piece, one chunk. If you do this for the other chunks, the main difference is the instantaneous frequency, which means we're going to get something like this. Now, the highest center frequency will be kf times mp, and the minimum will be minus kf times mp, plus, of course, the center frequency. So it seems that there is some additional bandwidth here as a result of the sink. So it's not really a carrier with delta moving, changing its frequency. A delta and spectrum will be a result of a, con a cosine that has been there for infinite time. Our cosine is band limited, or time limited, sorry, which means that it will give you a sync in frequency. And this sync will change according to the instantaneous frequency. From here to here, we have about 4 by bm. From here to here, we have about 4 by, by bm. So in total, we can write the bandwidth, and um, it's not delta, of course. We have some extra bandwidth here, as I pointed out. So the bandwidth will be 2k times nb from here to here. That's the range of instantaneous frequencies. And we're going to have also some additional 8 by bm from here, 4 by bm, and here 4 by bm. So this can be uh, approximated uh, to the following. That's the, the frequency deviation, delta omega. And we can also write this in terms of um, hertz by dividing by 2 by both sides. I get 2f plus 4 by 4 bm. But no, this is not the blue signal or the original signal that we are interested in. This is the red signal. And in fact, we, will, we can approximate things more. So this equation is not really correct because it's not the blue signal. It's, it's the red signal. I mean, it's the red signal, yes. And now, if you take two as a common factor, we can write it in this format. Carson's came up with some experimental validations and he showed up that this is overdoing it. The bandwidth, in fact, is less than this for the blue signal. So, because of the discontinuous, discontinuities, we found that the red signal is given higher bandwidth than the true signal. And with his uh, kind of uh, approximation and experimental work, he came up with the following approximations, which we call Carson's rule. It's not exact. The only difference here is that he dropped the two. So the bandwidth for FM signals is double the frequency deviation plus the bandwidth of the message. So no matter how you make the deviation and the frequency small, there will also be bandwidth of the message. So if, the, if you make this minimum, you still have to BM. Now, this is a very important equation. We call it the Carson's rule, and we need to remember it. It's inside the box. It says that the bandwidth for FM signals is tw 2 times delta F plus PM. Of course, PM, as we mentioned, is the bandwidth of, of the message that we have sent, and delta F is the frequency deviation in hertz. If you want a radian, you just scale things by 2 by. Now, special cases, for very wide band, if your signal is very wide band, then this is going to dominate compared with BM, so we can say the bandwidth is approximately 2 delta F. And if the, for the case of narrow band, we can say that PM is going to dominate. We can drop this term. And this is, if you recall, this is a narrow band scenario we, we discussed earlier. Just like we have defined the modulation index for, uh, for the AM, which is uh, MP over A, it was a kind of ratio between uh, amplitudes. For the case of FM and PM, the modulation index is referred to as beta, 
and it's delta F over BM. How much frequency deviation relative to the bandwidth of the message? In terms of beta, we can take BM as a common factor. We go from this step to this step. And of course, then we get beta here. So the bandwidth of FM signals in terms of beta can be written as 2BM times beta plus 1. So if beta approaches 0, we get narrow band. If beta is very large, or large, relatively large, we get wide band. So beta also can be used as a, as a measure of how wide band is your angle moderated signal. Okay, uh, this is just an extension for the case uh, of PM. So for PM, we have similar results. The deviation now, or the frequency, will be omega C plus KB times M dot, if you recall, where uh, M dot or MP dot is the uh, maximum of the derivative, maximum value. So of course, Carson's rule still apply exactly the same, but the delta F itself will be different. So it's going to be a KP MP dot divide by 2 by in terms of hertz. Okay, so the bandwidth of FM is um, depend on the maximum of the derivative, while the bandwidth the bandwidth of FM depends on the on the maximum of the message, while the bandwidth of PM depends on the frequency content of of the change of the message or the derivative itself.